Here we're going to take a look at functional groups. And this is really just a way we're going to categorize certain functionality in a molecule. But we're going to use this convention over and over again throughout the semester to describe certain properties. So the definition of a functional group is an atom or group of atoms with characteristic chemical and physical properties. Here are just a few. And really, it's structural differences in the molecule. For example, this first one, we have this triple bond. That's called an alkyne. The second one, we have an OH. That's an alcohol group. This third one, we have this C double bond O, which is a ketone. And this fourth one, we have this chlorine, which is a chloride. And these groups impart special reactivity in each of the molecules. Um, it gives these molecules different acidities. They react with different things. Um, for biomolecules, they'll interact with the body differently, different boiling points, different water solubilities. So it's very important to be able to parse out the different functional groups. So what we're going to do is go through uh, some of the most common functional groups, and we're going to look at them in a few different categories. One thing before we do that that I want to point out is the R convention. And a lot of times we'll use R as an abbreviation. And if you see this R, the simplest way to think about it is the rest of the molecule. It's a way to abbreviate the other stuff in the molecule that we're not focused on. So in this case, maybe we're focused on the OH. The rest of the molecule is whatever else. Um, I tend to be kind of loose on the definition of the R group, meaning it could be whatever. In the most strict sense of the definition, it really should just be a group containing carbons and hydrogens. So it could be a large complex group, but the group should only have carbons and hydrogens within it. The first class of functional groups is the hydrocarbons. And these are functional groups containing only carbon and hydrogen. And there's a few different ones here. The first is the simplest, and that's the alkane. Alkane is really as simple as you can get, so we don't classify it as a functional group because it doesn't impart any extra functionality in the molecule, but that is just you know, regular CHs with all sigma bonds. Next, we have the alkene, which is a carbon-carbon double bond. Um, here I've used generically used the R abbreviations. Here's an actual example. So the double bond is the alkene. Next is an alkyne, and that is a carbon-carbon triple bond. And then the last is an arene or aromatic group. Um, for now, we're just going to stick with the six-membered rings with three double bonds as being um, the aromatic functional group. In organic two, you'll learn how to expand this definition. Another way you might see the aromatic group drawn is with a circle in the middle. That means the same thing. And you can find a handout with all of these functional groups um, on the course website. The next class are the heteroatom containing functional group. And some of these have um, kind of more than one name you can give them. For example, an OH. That is an alcohol functional group, but it might also be called a hydroxy group, and both would be correct. 
if you have an oxygen where you have a carbon on each side, so a carbon here, a carbon here, that's called an ether functional group. If you have a nitrogen containing group, it could contain um, hydrogens or carbons, a mixture. Uh, those are called amines. If you have an SH group, that is called a thiol or mercapto group. And then if you have a sulfur, so this one has an SH, this is a sulfur bonded to a carbon and a carbon, that's called a sulfide. And then finally, if you just have a halogen bonded to a carbon, that's a halide. So it could be a fluoride, chloride, bromide, or iodide. The final category we'll look at are the carbonyl containing. And carbonyl is just a very generic term for the C double bond O group. But that can be further classified based on what's attached. So if you have a hydrogen attached to the carbonyl, that is called an aldehyde. If you just have two carbons attached, that's called a ketone. If you have an OR group, meaning an oxygen with some carbon or carbon chain attached to it, that's called an ester. If it's an OH, that is called a carboxylic acid. If it's a nitrogen, that's an amide. And if it's a halogen, that's an acid halide. Um, with the amide, I should mention it could be an NH2 or it could have carbons on it. So even if you had methyl groups here, CH3 groups, that would still be considered an amide functional group. Also note the difference in let's say we have this versus this. The one on the right, because you just have regular carbons bonded to the nitrogen, this is an amine. The one on the left, that is no longer an amine. Once you put the nitrogen next to this carbonyl, this whole group is now an amide. And this nitrogen in the amide behaves differently than the nitrogen in the amine. And that's why they're considered two different functional groups. So one thing we want to be able to do right now is just take a complex molecule and identify all of the functional groups. So here's the structure of a tenolol. Uh, this is a common beta blocker that's used to treat high blood pressure. And if we go through this, we want to be able to quickly identify the different functional groups. So I'll work this from left to right. And you may want to pause the video and try it yourself first. But first we have an amine. Next we have an alcohol. Then we have an ether. Then we have an aromatic ring or arene. And then finally, at the end of the chain, this is an amide. So you want to be able to look at a molecule and pick out the different functional groups. So make sure you know and take time to memorize the different functional groups. It'll save you a lot of time later if you can just immediately pick these out.